Swinburne University of Technology. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to number six. We're doing gender again, naked of PowerPoints because this, this too is, is a reasonably straightforward one and we've talked a little bit about gender, gender earlier on. Um, I'm a man. I can testify to that, I can't demonstrate it, unfortunately. Oh, I can, well, I can with what we call secondary sexual characteristics, which is a beardy face, a little bit of hair down there, um, the timbre of my voice, a little bit, I suppose, hair on my hands. Um, primary sexual characteristics, I'll spare you, won't make the other chaps jealous. Um, these are the biological factors <laughs> I was going to make David jealous as well, but nah. um, these are the biological factors that determine our sex. Our sex is whether we're male or female. Why am I clapping? I don't know. Um, because my dog at home, Springer Spaniel, lovely thing, is a male. I'm a male because that tells us what sex we are. But, then species category, I'm a man, you are a woman. Not you, David, but some of you people looking there. Um, so we have the category of maleness and femaleness. That's, that's, that's our sex. Then uh, we sort of have this species things that makes us a man or a woman or a dog or a bitch. Uh, but gender is exclusive to humans. We don't we probably do in an anthropomorphic way gender our animals because I always think of cats as girls as do and dogs as boys um, so I'm actually gendering the two species because I'm attributing qualities to the cats that I think are feminine because they, you know, they have that oh I'm getting all girly now <laughs> that sleek um, um, sort of gentleness and maybe even you might suggest aloofness but I wouldn't suggest that Whereas the dog are big, buffy and dumb. Oh, no, I don't mean that either. Um, but you understand what I mean. <laughs> do you understand what I mean, David? You do, good. So that's the process of gendering. I mean, gender, gender, the news, the news just buggers up the idea of gender terribly. So um, a restaurant was robbed today and the gender of the person who robbed the restaurant was male. So how do you tell that? Because he ran away like that. Because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a style of um, human expression of our sex. That's the gender thing. In fact, the person who robbed the restaurant was male and that male is their sex. So the sex of the person was male, not the gender of the person was male. Because Gender is a social construct. Gender is attributing characteristics to the notion of what our, what our sex is. And gender was, so, I think I made that, I've made that point clearly, David? Yeah, okay, good. Where did this come from? Um, gender is, 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 a, is, is quite a modern concept and gender came, came Primarily the notion of gender came out of women's studies and women's studies came out of second wave feminism and second wave feminism uh, was the feminism of the 60s and 70s where women um, in that Weberian way that I talked about earlier where groups can rise up from the bottom and influence the structures of society and women in this women's study, studies area uh, in, in this feminist area needed to have people understand the problem that w the problems that women faced. So they problem problematized, which is a way we we talk about of opening up an issue to to be investigated. They problematized the notion of being a woman um, in in relation to to the the way the world was organized. Um, and the the only way you could do that was to talk about the way of being a woman in relation to the way of being a man and that became the notion of gender because what women were fighting against was a was a organizing principle called patriarchy and that is men working in the interests of men that society what women in the 60s and 70s were fighting against was that society was organized in the interests of men now it, it certainly had 
um, a component of, of sex about it, um, but there was also a, a, a strong maleness, a masculinity about the way, the way things were organised. So that, that in order to really talk about difference, uh, and to get away from talking about biological differences, which is what happened in sort of the evolutionary notions of Victorian England, that women weren't capable because their organs were all wrong, and if they thought too much, the blood rushed up from their reproductive organs into their heads, and if they were using their reproductive organs, the blood rushed out of their brains down into their girly bits, you know, and, and you had this silly argument, these, these ridiculous that have, you know, impossible to believe nearly that now that, that people had these, these notions and ideas um, about women and, and women's, women's roles based on the inferiority of their biology and, and the, the superiority of their, their biology and even size of brains, you know. So you had all this silliness about biology but to a certain extent it, it, it stuck and what the second wave feminists had to do was to, had to pull the argument away from biology and it simply being biological differences because of course you can't defeat biology. If, if you get a, a, a learned man scientist going, well, you know, your organs are going to be flooded with blood or deprived of blood. Um, if you do certain activities, you're a woman. How do you argue with that? You can't. You can't open up the body and go, look, the blood's evenly distributed where it should be. So you have to deal with, with, with these bio biological differences in, in the manner of actually how, how they're expressed because the biological differences, as we know, aren't driving us. It's socialised differences that, that are driving us. So the notion of masculinity and femininity then became the way of dealing with, with these differences so that you can deal with difference uh, and hope to bring about change because you changed perceptions and the way things were dealt with. You didn't have to change biology. So. Gender studies was, was what emerged from this, and this problem, problematized the difference between men and women, not in biological terms, but in social terms and in organizational terms, how, how men organized, organized the world in this, this category that, that the feminists uh, described as, as patriarchy. So the, the notion about gender um, became a, a useful vehicle for women talking about their uh, their oppression in the case of the um, the radical feminists, in the case of the liberal feminists, um, the notion of inequality was was uh, because of the overlay of patriarchy. See, the feminists, the second wave feminists, fell into three categories. There were the the radical feminists, the the liberal feminists, and the Marxist um, socialist feminists, and they all had they were all fighting for liberation from the, the circumstance in which, in which women found themselves and, and they were many and varied but unequal pay, um, being forced to stay, stay at home, being forced to leave work as I was mentioning earlier as well uh, if they became pregnant or married, the lack of opportunity um, in, in education. Um, even today we, we, we still have um, in society, the, the most likely people to be poor are women, uh, and you're more likely to be a poor woman if you're if you're a single parent. Um, you're most likely to be a single parent if you're a woman. So, what the the feminist movement was was fighting um, was this this sort of oppression or limitation on the opportunities that women had to to live an independent life and achieve equality with men. Um, I suppose the most successful group of the three were the liberal feminists and they were the, their, their, their problem wasn't so much with patriarchy um, in an ideological sense, their, their problem was equality. The, the liberal feminists argued that if, if women were given the opportunity, had equal access um, and um, an equal distribution of resources, then they, in that meritorious way, would rise to well, rise to reach the level that, that men had already achieved, and the sort of the spoils of society would be dividedly even amongst evenly amongst men and women, because women obviously um, 
were and are the equals of men in terms of, of potentiality and latent ability. It's just that the way society was structured was limiting women's access and opportunities to that. And then the whole socialization process um, that um, particularly through the early 20th century, well, Victorian times in the early 20th, 20th century, encouraged women to, to be expressive as we were talking about the Talcott Parsons was arguing for in the socialization process to be the nurturers, to be the carers, to be the ones who were responsible for the emotional life of the family, not for the instrumental or the worldly life of the family. So th all this was trying to be broken down and, and gender and the approach uh, of, of problematizing the differences between men and women in sort of a social and perceptual construct rather than a biological construct was the vehicle that, that the feminists used. It, and I suppose gender as a concept has been so successful it's gone into the language. Unfortunately it's lost its potency because it becomes simply now a polite term for sex. So it's much easier for the newsreader to say well the gender of the person who committed that crime was male rather than saying the sex of that person. Um, um, because sex, I suppose, sex apart from being the sort of biological category that our chromosomes determine, um, um, also, also implicates the notion of the act as well, and so I, they, there's a certain prurience, I, I imagine, that that pushes them away from using the term sex rather than using the term gender. So it's 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 at one time be successful, but its success has defeated itself because it's lost it's lost the real sort of potency of its meaning, which is about the the social category of men and women and then understanding that that social category is 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 constructed that the idea of maleness and femaleness is a is a social construction and it's not a biological given and and all you'd need to do is look amongst your friends and your family to see how there are how different different people of the same sex express their sex differently um, um, so you, you have this range of expressions and once you start to see sex in terms of, of the expressive range and the expressive not in terms of the Talcott Parsons but in terms of the performance that, that Judith Butler talks about, you then start to see that there's no reason why there should be a biological dominance um, that's appended to the, the XY combination of chromosomes rather than the XX, let alone the XXYs. Um, so, X, I'm sorry, um, XY men, XX are women, XXY um, have the, sort of the, the transgender indeterminate gender thing going on, which, oh, there was, a, there was a great documentary on the ABC just recently, which is worth My Intersex Journey, it was called. Um, you, you might pick it up on iview, abc.net.au slash iview. And it's a wonderful hours documentary about a young woman who was who was born a man who is is was is actually XY, but and I forget the name of the syndrome, but but there's a syndrome that that these people have that blocks the uptake of the male hormone. So as they grow, they don't up they don't have an uptake of the male hormone and of course they don't develop male characteristics. They develop female characteristics. So for all intents and purposes we're dealing with a woman who has a, a biological uh, chromosomal um, makeup that says she's a man. Um, this, there's um, internal testicles that, that, that were removed in this woman's case. Um, and these are the key and interesting ways of dealing with gender when we look at these, these areas that, that, that sort of are, are sort of biologically peripheral, if you like, where gender construction and the idea of, of what it is to be a man and a woman aren't straightforward. We can't, in those cases, revert back to simple biology because biology will say this, this woman is a man because chromosomally she is. But for all intents and purposes, she's a woman. She's been socialized as a woman. Uh, she's come to know herself as a woman. She was married. Um, and it was, it's a terrific story. And it's not, it's not wacky and sort of, I don't know, King's Crossy or St Kildare <laughs> at all. It's, it's ordinary suburban Australian uh, story about, about uh, 
this this category that to be perfectly honest I wasn't sure what intersex was transsexuals fine I understood that but intersex I wasn't quite sure of because it not hasn't been my main sort of field of, of research um, and it was it was it was a revelation in education for me so I it's, see if you can find it um, I can actually help you here because I have iView up on my computer right at the moment and if I just click out of that And I go to M for my, and I'll see if it's there, my intersex. Let's go I. Talk amongst yourselves, will you? Have a drink, go and have a break, have a cup of coffee, glass of wine. Eh. One more thing I'll search. Help. I'm at the help thing. Options. All right, I'll look, I'll see what I can find. No, go away. I'll see what I can find and I'll put an announcement. I shouldn't make promises like that without writing it down. I'll put an announcement up. My intersex journey. My intersex. And I'll put, a, put an announcement up. Um, um, yeah, giving you the link if I can find it. It may have dropped off. They may not have had the rights to it for for this long. But if we can get it, it'd be, it's a beauty. If not, I might try and get the library to... to oh, the library? I get the library to, to see if they can order it in. So, that's gender. Thank you very much, and I'll see you... This time I will see you next week. This has been a Swinburne production.